it's Beth here. Um, over 65, I'm still talking. It's episode 230, June 15th, 2021. I've been missing in action for six days because I went into a funk. I swore I wouldn't. We, I live in Austin. We actually had great weather until June 10th. It was rainy. It was cool. Everything was green. And I promised Kit that since the summer would be a month shorter than it usually is, scorching heat, I promised I would not complain. But I actually went into a deeper funk because it was so great. So I'm just coming out of it. I mean, I didn't go out at all yesterday, so I kind of forgot. I'm going to go out today, but after this. So I kind of just put it on the back burner, but it's so depressing. I mean, it's actually humid, which Austin really isn't. And when I go out, I get covered in sweat, and I hate myself. I feel like a pig. So that's just, it's just horrible. So I much prefer being frozen in Alaska, but I'm not like everybody else. I thought when I got older that it was going to get cold like people do. And from my childhood, you know, moved to uh, Florida from New York because they're freezing to their bones. I was looking forward to it. I did not get that. I just got super hypermenopause that didn't go away and still sweating like a pig. So, okay, I got I got my rant out. That's good. A good thing happened is two days ago, I went to, a good thing happened, comma. Um, two days ago, I went to my friend Trisha's house. Her husband finally left the house. Finally. It took I would have gone to her house during the pandemic. She hasn't gone anywhere. I haven't gotten gotten anywhere. And I would have gone into her house, but he never left. Not for a minute. Finally, two days ago, he was going to be gone for five hours. I go racing over. We get back on the couches for the first time in over a year. Just talking for five hours. With the windows drawn, the air conditioner on. It was just amazing. We weren't in a restaurant. Nobody, we didn't have to double tip, which I don't mind. It's just that after two and a half hours, they want you to go no matter what you do. Or a movie theater where you got to get up out of your seat. And we were in recliners. We were reclining. I do like that about movie theaters, but I can't stand when the movie's over. They've just got like 10 minutes to clean. I understand it, but we're always being rushed and pushed around. And we're old. So it's not even like we're attractive in the restaurant. So there we were for five hours, just able to talk. And I actually beat him. I didn't even have to see him. He got stuck in traffic. So it was like such a perfect day. And it made me just think about recliners and how great they are. And I went into the history of it because they really are amazing. In 1850, the French, of course, um, came up with the recliner. They called it the chaise lounge or the raccommier, the chair. I thought it was developed for girls with big skirts like uh, Scarlett O'Hara to keep the skirt all full. But it was actually developed for uh, French soldiers who probably didn't want their creases on their jackets to get messed up because, you know, French soldiers are sort of interested in their appearance. So that's how it started. There was a man named Mr. Bacola who invented the Barco Lounger in 1896. And he actually got the idea from it for it from dentists, which I hadn't thought about it, but the dentist chair is really a recliner. Although when I'm there, I'm so tense that I can't even, I forget and block the whole experience if I can. But that's where really the first recliner came from. Then I was doing some research and I was like, I was going to call this one the reclining years instead of the declining years. And then I wanted to look up what are other words for latter years, declining years, older years. And they're horrible, all of them. Geriatric, decrepitude, debility, feebleness, one I never heard before called codicity, codicity. Oh, I learned how to pronounce it and I forgot. Caducity. Caducity. That's it. Which is senility and frail together. This is for over 65. Winter of life, dotage, evening of life, 
And, of course, glaring out on the page, the only one like it is golden years. But everything else is decaying. And really, not one thing about wisdom? Nope. They give all that to the prime of life people who are 25 to 50. And they get wise. Give me a break. We know more than they do. We've been around longer than they have. They get perfection, sophistication, manliness, completion, heyday, halcyon, full flower, pinnacle, and best years. And we get decrepitude. And really, over 65. Some places it's 60. And I looked it up, only 2.5% of the over 65 people are in nursing homes. So where's this decrepitude coming from? And feebleness, an evening of life. I mean, it's they're, they're stacking the deck against us. Come on, they gotta lighten up. It's not that bad. We got a lot, I could have 20 more years here. I can still get up out of the chair. I'm still thinking, but this is what I'm facing every time I walk out the door. They look at me and they see feebleness. Do, I'm a do, old dotage. I'm a dowager with a my hump is not I'm not there yet. My missing hump is probably coming. They probably see the hump, and I swear it's not even there. So we still have our hands full. I feel like I was doing better when I was wearing my mask and sunglasses. Nobody could tell how old I was. Nobody. I mean, I'm not that great a dresser, but. They couldn't tell my age. And I got better service when I was wearing my mask and the sunglasses. The combo was great. My mask without the sunglasses was better than now. But, I mean, I was like the Lone Ranger. You couldn't see me. And my hair, I got, you know, it's not, I'm not doing like uh, my great Aunt Kitty's uh, every Sunday and every once a week, the hairstyle, that bouffante thing. It's just long and straight, so it really isn't obvious how old I am. But now I'm right back, and they're looking at me, and they're seeing it all. I'm in the winter of my life, and it's going to be winter for 20 years. This is just not fair. So, but I got got to be at my friend's house for five hours and talk, and talk and talk and talk. We never stopped because it had been a full year. We have terrible cell phone connection it's it's been horrible for a year and if we go anywhere we have to leave we don't even go anywhere so it was just great got most of this off my chest and then the weather changed and it got really really hot and really I'm sweating and I'm inside so it's gonna you know it's gonna be a tricky summer I think um maybe you're in some great place like uh Michigan or some place where the summer is beautiful And maybe I'm believing you don't even have mosquitoes. That's what I want to think for you. But in Texas, the summer is our winter of life. So, you know, unless you have kids and you're in a pool, which um, I don't. And I've got dogs and they are mouth breathers and we're not in the pool. So hopefully you've, you've got some reason to get out. Maybe you can get in the lake and maybe lakes are cooler wherever you are. The lakes where we are are covered in slime. So that's why I've been gone. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm still not over my rant. I got to snap out of it and uh, get back out there in my evening of life, my decaying cre- decrepitude. <laughs> I better just uh, get out while I can, enjoy it while I got it. So same to you and under these extremely difficult, really, I mean, like, I think it was prejudice. I mean, the word ageism doesn't mean anything. But to describe a whole bunch of people with these words, and that's all. Geriatric decrepitude, feebleness, winter of life, dotage, um, declining function. This is, you can't do that to people. Not for 20 years. So we just have to fight back. Just go out there with a big smile on your face. And let them see some lesser decrepitude. I mean, some good-looking decrepitude. That's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to be stintillating decrepitude. You give it a shot too. Let's fight back. This is awful, 
and um, stay sane and I will be back. Bye-bye.